welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Lou Huff, Harriet Russell and Tor Cardona. Welcome ladies. This weekend we launched the very first wedding edition from Sherlock's, our new monthly newsletter giving rise to be the lowdown on everything they need to know, from beauty to fashion, venues to flowers. So to celebrate we have a wedding special for you on the show today. We're going to be sharing our favourite celebrity dresses of all time, plus discussing our thoughts on honeymoons from where to go to when to do it. Later, Lou and I are going to show you the best affordable bridesmaids dresses out there. If you thought you had to shell out serious money for your best friends on your big day, think again. Plus, I'm going to be joined by wedding planner to the stars, Mark Nemerko. From pudding rooms to carousels, he's going to be sharing all the latest trends you can incorporate into your big day. So, first up, we have to discuss the wedding edition. It looks so beautiful, blood, so sweat and tears, but, but it worked out, didn't it? Oh, yeah. it looks so, so nice. And, I, you know, so, many, so much great content, I think, for our readers. You know, I think everyone knows someone that's getting married. They're getting married themselves. So, yeah, it's all relevant for everyone. I also think, like, I've been there, done that, but I still, like, still oh, found it oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Harriet, you as well, presumably. Like, yeah, definitely. Not, uh, unlike these two engaged ladies on the sofa with us today, I, I still think so interesting and so pretty. Definitely. Mm. You never know when it's going to be useful anyway. And also, things like the venues piece, which we wrote, could apply to any number so of yeah, events. True. So, so true. So true. It's not just limited to weddings. So true. And the makeup as well. So, yeah. yeah. And, and we covered, what, beauty, venue, news, a bit of fashion in this one, but there's still so much more to come, so yeah. keep your eyes peeled once a month. Be <laughs> exciting. Um, okay, we're going to talk about wedding dresses now. Um, we did a bit of research and found that on average people in the UK spend £1,313 on a wedding dress, um, and the most expensive celebrity dress of all time was worn by Victoria Swarovski, I think the clue is in the name there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, costing an estimated $1 million, and apparently Kim Kardashian was um, the most expensive after that at half a million dollars. Um, wow. So it got us thinking, I know, expensive. Quite expensive. Yeah. You'd like to think about what all that money could have gone to. Anyway, uh, it got us thinking about our favourite celebrity dresses of all time. Um, Tor, let's start with you. Priyanka Chopra. Yeah, I just love that. And before we, before we start talking about it, I want to say my dress is actually nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so glam and there's something just so fun about it. And I think for me, what I love that that dress in the setting of her wedding was just so perfect and just so fun and yeah. I absolutely loved it. Was that for their, it, their wedding in India? Yeah. It's so there, were, there were lots of other different outfits yeah, there, there as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah. uh, this one ref really references like that sari style yeah. while still, it kind of blends exactly yeah. like the, the, the cut but kind of still exactly. being kind of traditional white dress as well. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't and it? And it made her body just look so amazing. Yeah. Just, yeah. God, stunning. Big tick from me. Agreed. Uh, Harriet, yours was, well, you stole one from me. I, Harriet got there first. I really wanted to say Poppy Delevingne, who mm. looked incredible on her wedding day, didn't she? Yeah, although we do slightly differ in the sense that obviously Poppy had two wedding dresses. Yes. She had a Chanel one in London and then the sort of big to do in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And it was the Morocco dress, which was my pick. It was. Um, from Pucci. So, yeah, I, I just thought it was so different. And it's very difficult. A lot of people say, oh, go out on a limb and incorporate colour into your wedding dress. And I think nine times out of ten, that doesn't end up working. Mm -hmm. But for her, I thought it really did. Lou, would you ever put colour in a wedding dress? Oh, well, I'm not the most colourful. <laughs> <one. laughs> you do love colour. I, I don't know. I think <laughs> nowadays it's so much more than just your wedding dress. So I think there's other opportunities to maybe Especially play around with too. your style. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you've got a um, London wedding or an abroad wedding or the meal before, mm -hmm. I think you can incorporate your style and your personality mm -hmm. into areas of your wardrobe um, in, in such an easy way now, nowadays. Do you guys remember that Angelina, Angelina Jolie had um, doodles from all her kids, like in, no. sewn into her dress yeah. when her oh, brother yeah, actually got married? Yeah, yeah. Well, you say, oh, I'm yeah. not sure about that. And like yeah. Hayley Bieber with her... Um, oh, yeah. yeah Until yeah. yeah. death do we part on, yeah. the, on her veil. Mm, nice look. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lou, yours was uh, Carolina Herrera. Yes, um, on Carolyn Kendi. So this is a dress oh, from sorry, yes. over 30 years ago. And actually probably more similar to Poppy Delevingne's mm. Chanel mm. dress, which both of us love. Love. And I don't know, I just love how it's, it's almost like a t shirt, not t shirt, but it's a, um, a drop waist, mm -hmm. beautiful tulle skirt, puff shoulders. I love the, the, the tulle detailing mm -hmm. and the fact that it still feels relevant 30 years on. Yeah. I just think that's a real test of great style. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I think the Kennedys, like, you can attribute that to a lot of them. We were talking about yeah. Carolyn Bessett Kennedy as well before, who wore a slip dress on her yeah. wedding day. Yeah. Also, so relevant. Yeah. Today, isn't it? And I just love it. It's like a high neck as well. I mm -hmm. think, you know, you don't have to 
have loads of skin on show mm. on, on your wedding day. Mm. And, you know, you, it's a bit more demure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah. this feels modern. My other, I was going to choose Pippa Middleton's dress because I did love that oh, I as love well. Pippa's, yeah. yeah. And, and again, I, with a high neck. I like, nearly went Kate's as well because mm, I just thought I, it was too obvious. But I, but having said that, it's not like I didn't go for somebody really obvious. But yes. <laughs> I am. Um, I just I think it's like if you want traditional, I agree. It's the, it's the ultimate, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, mine is Meghan Markle's, but it was her second dress. I wasn't yes. a huge fan of the first yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. But the second, her Stella McCartney halter neck that she wore for the party, Stunning. just oh my mm. god, just so elegant and simple. Mm. Yeah, and timeless. And do you know, I was speaking to our new weddings editor, Michelle, um, about the the trends and kind of how they've changed in, in wedding dresses over the years. And she was saying that since the Meghan dress, everything's gone a lot more sort of minimal and contemporary, and it's been a real shift. Yeah, that. yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I won't ask details about the wedding dresses mm -hmm. for both of you, but. Did you end up going for what you thought you were going to go for? Do you want me to go first? Go on then. Go on, uh, completely the opposite to what I thought I was going to go for. I thought I knew I had this vision in my head of the, dre the shape, every, mm. like down to a fine art. I went and tried it on and I looked just so frumpy and awful. Yeah, that's what happened to me. Um, and I've gone, when I went into the shop, I said, okay, I don't want this, this, this. And that's exactly what I've gone. Yeah. So yeah, the oh, opposite. The interesting. The opposite. Luke? I didn't really ever know what I wanted. I think I always knew what I wasn't going to go for, but that didn't really leave me with that much option, <laughs> actually. So I, I have found the, the process actually way more difficult than I thought mm. it was. But yeah, hopefully what the result is, is something that I feel good in. And I think that's the most important thing that's with right. any bride. Yeah, you definitely. just have to be true to yourself and your style and feel like the best version of yourself. Yeah, so, true. so whatever mm -hmm. works for you. Mm. Harriet, you should write down now what you think you're going to end up wearing <laughs> on a wedding day yeah. and then we'll come back to you and, and, and see if yeah. you yeah. end up yeah. doing it. Because yeah, I don't think anyone ends up no. with what they think. Do I've actually yeah. asked my fiance to draw it of what he thinks it will be so we can do a comparison to see. Great I think, I think that works because you've got an arty <laughs> yeah. fiance. I don't think mine would have got very far. I'll get a sick man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, well, obviously, all the wedding chat got us thinking about honeymoons um, because one in three people now, it turns out, have both a mini moon and a honeymoon. I know I was in that camp. Um, and apparently, 12% of couples in the UK jetted off to the Maldives as well, making it the most popular honeymoon destination. Um, again, happy to share. We're not really sure where neither of you have got your honeymoons planned, have you? But how do we feel about the mini moon, honeymoon situation? I think it makes sense. Sorry, Leo, I'm really yeah, talking no, to you here. But I think because you're getting married abroad. Yeah. I don't want to say what yeah, you're yeah. <laughs> you You know, it makes so much makes sense for you to stay on. Yeah, and I think I that think. was kind of a big... I, as you know, it wasn't... We've always been on the camp of we want to do our honeymoon after our wedding. It's like such an amazing... You mean immediately after? Immediately straight after, after yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, it's such a big day and the fact that we're sort of already abroad, we just want to continue that celebration and be there and kind of live in that moment and I don't know I, I, it's always I've, it's never been an option I think I think it makes sense also financially if you can wait a little bit and you know if you're saving for that but we just really want to do it straight after so yeah we are going off straight away hopefully yeah, yeah. So three and a half weeks off work you lucky yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. oh my god <laughs> it's, not, it's not that much shorty <laughs> um tour mini moon first mini moon first and then we haven't even thought about the honeymoon actually and i feel like i've got so much to think about and so much to plan i can't i can't think about it yeah is that, is that am i allowed to say that yeah. is that why is that why because you felt like you just had too much to think about with the wedding yeah. you didn't want to go into i can't that. even think about it and especially with money as well yeah. I'm just, i'd rather wait and then yeah even do maybe a week in September and even another week again next year. Yeah. Three, I why not? <laughs> well, yeah. 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 I, just wanna, I want to spread out all the love. Yeah. But, we, but we are doing a three-night mini moon Lovely. straight after the wedding. That's well, So um, we waited. We did. We also, because we got married abroad, did a mini moon where we were, which... Again, yeah, as you say, kind of made total sense. And then we waited. And I have to say, I, like, I completely respect wanting to do it yeah. straight afterwards. But straight after we were like wedding whereas six months later we were like oh marriage yeah and that's, that's quite different such a good point. and it was really lovely to sit there and be like oh my god we're married for two weeks as opposed to like rah the wedding yeah. that's the only that's the difference yeah. i would say but, and i can't so really think about all. having to pack for the whole wedding weekend yeah, yeah, as well that. as a two-week well holiday yeah. that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. just whereas i guess if you're going away already yeah but then also i don't think you have the novelty of being like we've just got married this is my husband and i that's actually yeah. your first trip oh like, i'm still husband, like oh, husband, husband and wife and i don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. Each, do you know what they're all like yeah. it's all lovely it's all fabulous whatever you choose yeah. to do um harriet we ran a feature um for uh for, on the new wedding edition uh, with some of the best honeymoon destinations whatever time of year you're going where stood out Oh, gosh, such a hard pick. Yeah, we teamed up with Turquoise, which are one of the best companies out there when it comes to honeymoons. And they have this new sort of campaign where they've broken down honeymoons per month. So if you are delaying, if you're not, it doesn't matter. You can just pick your month and they've got the ideal trip in mind, which is great. I think possibly... 
the Christmas in the Caribbean was a bit of a hit. It's an absolute classic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the idea of winter sun mm. and I love the idea of sort of jetting off at Christmas and yeah. getting away from all the hectic mm. stuff. I think that is also something to bear in mind. If you're having a summer wedding but you want to go somewhere like the Caribbean, you've got to think about where the weather is right mm-hmm. then. Yes. So you're not going to be able to go to those sort of countries then. So whether yeah. you want to delay it and then go in, yeah. in the winter. So yeah, which is also why you waited, right? Yeah, because yeah, where yeah. we wanted to go, it was better exactly. to finish. So yeah. I think yeah. thinking about where you want to go, probably time of year. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I should say in that mm. feature, not everything is sort of beachy, you know, just lie on a sun lounger, crash out. There are adventure things in there, Sri Lanka, yeah. Borneo. Mm. So there's something for everyone. Yeah. I did adventure. I think it's quite a nice way to Yeah, I think it. a mix is yeah, nice. A nice mix. Yeah. Agreed. Um, well, we also uh, found, saw a stat that said Italy, Greece and Spain were the hotspots for European mini moons. So if those are those are obvious mm. choices, aren't they? That's where we all ended up. So, OK. Lots of inspo if you're looking to book something. Um, great, thanks everyone. Uh, coming up after the break, from honeymoons to bridesmaids dresses, Lou and I will be walking you through the best affordable designs your friends will thank you for. Don't go away. Big taffeta dresses to wrap around jersey styles. Bridesmaids dresses haven't always had the best wrap, but the good news is the Great British High Street has stepped in to create pretty feminine pieces that your best friends won't only love on your big day, but will actually wear again after. So we thought we'd bring you some of our favourites out there right now, and there are some really pretty options, aren't there? There are, and I think, as you say, it is so important to think about wearing them again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're, you're spending money on these dresses, you don't want them to just be like a throwaway mm-hmm. piece. So I think that's really what we've got with this collection is that they. They've, they've got a second wear exactly. at least. In particular, this ghost dress. We have. Can we just give Ghost a shout out for a oh minute? Oh my god! Yeah. Because they like they've always been a stalwart, haven't they? Yeah. For for um, bridesmaids dresses, but this new spring summer collection is just amazing. Completely, and as you said, that could very easily not be a bridesmaid mm-hmm. dress. And I think you can get your more traditional styles that are very much kind of sit in that camp. These are a little bit more contemporary. Mm-hmm. You were wearing something similar to yeah. this on the show the other day. And it's just beautiful, isn't yeah. it? I, I literally love this. I know what you mean. It's not the most traditional. Yeah. Um, we were saying before, what you perhaps you wouldn't want five bridesmaids all in this one dress, no. but you could mix and match them. You know, yeah. anything on this rail kind of all works together. Exactly. Um, and again, that kind of gives you a bit more of a contemporary yeah. bridesmaid look. And rules have gone out the window now. I don't think you have to have everyone either in the same colour, the mm. same style. You can kind of pick theme and people go around that so yeah, yeah I love gorgeous that. one and you can absolutely wear that to other people's weddings oh my god 100% yeah oh, um, and this another is so one too. is this number from ghost so be- the fabric is beautiful yeah. on that really slip like that sort of slip sort of mm-hmm. satin style yeah gorgeous. Um, easy to wear I love that it's got longer sleeves mm-hmm. as well so pretty yeah we've got a nice mix of there's you know you've got your strappy slip dresses but not everybody wants to wear no. that and you want your bridesmaids to feel comfortable don't you on, exactly. on your day so um, exactly. yeah good to have a bit of sleeve in there then another one from ghost this I think I think this is my favorite. It is. If I had this to is so yeah, you, isn't I it? love this so much. Love the beautiful frilly yeah. shoulder detail as well. Um, it's got a gorgeous shape running through it. It's just, it's stunning. And this is quite contemporary, but again, yeah. I think you could, if you wanted all your bridesmaids and matching dresses, you could yeah. quite easily put three or four friends in this and they'd all look gorgeous. Definitely. Lovely for sort of destination weddings yeah. as well. So, so pretty. So pretty. Um, next, we've got probably a slightly more traditional shape. This one's from Tebeka. But it's, it's actually jumpsuit. Jumpsuit. Not that traditional. No, but I think this is quite a traditional <laughs> it is, shape. It is, it is. Yes. 
top, um, beautiful uh, kind of icy blue, which mm -hmm. I think is a great colour on so many people. Yeah. Um, and then this beautiful draping detail yeah. around the back. Ted Baker is so good at making things look so expensive. Yeah. And, you know, a jumpsuit isn't necessarily for everybody. But again, I love the idea of that kind of mix and match. Exactly. So have a few in a jumpsuit, have a few in a dress. And yeah. that, that just looks so good in the photos. And it? it's unlikely, I guess, that your bridesmaids are all going to be of the same shape and exactly. suit, suit the same sort of style or colour. So it's really important, I think, to think about your bridesmaids and yeah. what they are going to feel comfortable in. Definitely. Well, see, well. not everybody has a traditional wedding either. So if you're, you know, if you're doing something a bit different, if it's more of a party, less exactly. of a wedding, then great. Um, another beautiful option from Warehouse, which have just launched a bridesmaid collection, and it is stunning. Um, gorgeous, like sort of peachy colour. Um, again, this one feels a little bit more elegant, a yeah. little bit. Um, a little bit older, maybe. Definitely. This this is this whole warehouse collection is very like traditional yeah. bridesmaid. It really kind of ticks the box if that's what you're looking yes. for. Um, and again, there's they do kind of X colorways and then all the different styles in those colorways. So yeah. you can get this in the grey and the and the pink and also in white. They do this too. And Beautiful. so either mix and match or mix and match the styles. You know? Beautiful. And I don't know. It it, do, it does feel. Um, more modern as yeah. well, even though it's kind of got those classic touches Agreed. to it. Then we've got another one um, in a similar colorway. Oh, I this love this one. Else. I think this one is my favorite, actually. This one's gorgeous. Let's show you the back, shall we? And it's, so it busy. touches on that sort of slip dress. Oh, sorry, I'm going to attach. <laughs> um, that slip dress style, but feels a little bit more substantial. Yeah, agreed. And um, I love that both of the warehouse dresses are they're under 80 pounds, actually. I was going to say Amazing. under 100. Yeah, so, so again, if you've got quite a few bridesmaids to kit out and you want to yeah. pay for it yourself, then that's then that's the most affordable way to do it. And gorgeous. And like that, with like a cream blazer over the top yeah, of so it. Yeah, nice, so nice. Gorgeous. Love that. Somebody somebody in the team was eyeing that up for a, we a wedding later oh, in the really? year. So not just a bridesmaids dress. Um, next one, a little bit more fun. This is from Rat and Boa. I think, again, if you've got a destination wedding mm -hmm. on the beach, you want your bridesmaids to be kind of setting the scene. Yeah. This is cool for that, isn't it's it? It's so cool. They are the masters of slip dress, Rat and Boa. They're yeah. available on matches.com. Um, I just think it's so pretty. And yeah, it's tie-dye, which is really on trend, but it's yeah. not in your face, hippie tie-dye. It's, no. it's really, you know, feminine, cool. I just love it. I love the colors. And a cowl neck, that 90s shape is really making a yeah. comeback. Um, and then, yeah, cross cross at the back. And again, this is a dress you are 100% going to wear again. Yeah. You know, even if your bridesmaids are in it, and then maybe you get it for your honeymoon. I was just about to say, or wear this too. Again, we were talking about wearing different dresses to your different events. Yeah. wedding I love it and also if you know not everybody wants to wear a slip dress but then again you've got the colors that referencing the other more traditional exactly. dresses so mix and match them and it's yeah. like, perfect next up ASOS it's always going to be a winner isn't mm -hmm. it for bridesmaid dresses um, again this one's a slightly more traditional shape in that sort of icy blue grey a, a colour I think we see time mm -hmm. and time again um, because it works doesn't it yeah yeah. it's a pretty it's a traditional bridesmaid colour but as you say it's it ticks a box that's yeah. why um, again it looks great in pictures but they also do do these again in another group in, in multiple colours yeah. so they do a, like a pink version a more blush version of this so Gorgeous you can either mix and match detail. the colours or the shapes and yeah, the skirt it's on that is absolutely Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think you want it's good skirt. A really on good things, train you? on that. It's gorgeous. Uh, finally, another ASOS dress. Yes, another ASOS one. I love this one. Again, beautiful shapes, almost like that cross detail and draping at the front. Mm. Super, super elegant. Um, yeah, I think you just can't go wrong with that. Yeah, can you? agreed. And again, mix and match the different styles. Yeah, so whoever. Lovely. Great. Are you feeling inspired? I am. I just think <laughs> bridesmaid dresses have changed so much over the years, and I think you can you can see that there is so much more on offer now. Mm -hmm. You don't need to kind of go with what traditionally you think everyone should have. I think. Yes. Think about your your bridesmaids, what their style is, what they're going to feel confident in. Yeah. Agreed. Very good advice. Thanks. All right. Well, as usual, everything will be linked in the show notes below. Next up, wedding planner to the stars, Mark DeMurco, will be here revealing all the biggest wedding trends to come for 2020. Think luxury trains for arrival, donuts on tap, and whole rooms dedicated to dessert. You won't want to miss it. Going to Brighton. Yay! Woo! Waves there, which is freaking so high up. I think we're going to be the only people on the ride. Welcome to Brighton Pier. How much have you spent? Ten a pound. And how much have you got out? Ten p. Yeah! Got it. Look at that. Woo! Two pounds! Oh, what? Oh, look at these beautiful emeralds. Why is there so much jewelry here? Yeah. Isn't that just heaven? Wow. Oh my god, I love this. What a look. This is an identity, it's more than a look. Look at I am now. What do you think of it? I don't hit it. I mean, it's insane! That is insane. Oh my god, I love that. Oh my god, that. That's it, Charlotte. That's the one. You're gonna buy it? Such a good coat. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
It's a perilous road. Go, 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 go,
Um, I quite like that. And then also, I think, you know, like, for example, we've been working with a pianist of late who is very young and very cool, mm -hmm. but we put him in a classic setting with a, you know, a baby grand. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a fun cool. way to play with old and new. I know a few people who have started getting friends or relatives or whatever to sing their first dance as well. Right. So leaving the band aside <laughs> and just rolling out a friend with, with a good voice. I hate to yeah, obviously yeah. I was going to no say. No one's asked me yet. Um, but yeah, that's quite yeah. a cool way to incorporate I mean, your friends and family. I, mean, I, I, I learned, I've been doing this for 15 years and I think it's always important to listen to the couple. You know, very early on, I had a couple that wanted karaoke in the evening. And I was obviously quite out of mm. it. But then he was in a pop band, and so naturally a load of people could sing, and actually it worked really well. Cool. So, so basically, yeah. it's whatever, you, whatever I works think, for yeah, you. Yeah, don't feel that you need to follow any rules. Cool. I like that. Um, okay, travel. Um, you sent over some images of yes, a train. British, tell me, the British yes. Pullman. Do you tell? So we rented exclusively the British, uh, the Bellman British Pullman, yes. which is an old school train. I'm obsessed, and so I'm uh, one of those. You can imagine I'm very particular about uh, service and everything. It's one of those It's one of those times where I kind of, even for me, I was charmed every meeting I had. And I was like, even if I've got to wait half an hour for a drink, sure. it'd be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so with the train, it was a wedding at Blenheim Palace mm -hmm. and it was the, the rehearsal dinner. So everybody met at Victoria, mm -hmm. um, a Victoria station in London. And at that point you met the Nomerco, we call them the Nomerco boys, but they're all handsome. They're very kind handsome, of hosts. they are. Mm -hmm. um, and they, at check-in, you got your room key for your bedroom, you put your luggage in, mm -hmm. so it was a whole operation. Okay. But it works really well. But I if bet you, it does, yeah. My, my only recommendation is just be patient, you've got to deal with the network route. Okay, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's a very yeah. good point. Um, obviously, that's for a pretty big budget. Yes. Um, if you wanted to do something a little bit different, people often obviously get married in one yeah. venue and then move on to somewhere else. What can you do to mix I think, up that, um, that transport? I think black cabs, a fleet of them, mm -hmm. are quite fun, particularly in the country, because yep. it's not something you expect. Mm -hmm. um, that's always quite a good, fun thing to do. And obviously, I just think, you know, even on another level, um, you know, just ensuring people get from A to B and mm -hmm. there's a bit of fun with it. Yeah. So even if you are doing, you know, the red bus, which we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of times, and we still do it more so just because of, we've got a large number and yeah. you can't get as many people on a coach. Um, but do, you know, have champagne on it, yeah. you know, make it an event. If, if You could put a magician on the bus. Yes, I love that. What a good <laughs> idea. Um, we run a feature called Me and My Wedding in right. the wedding, wedding edition. And um, a bride who told us about her winter wedding a few years ago had a, a big brass band dressed as Santa's. It was a relatively oh Christmassy God, wedding. Walk the whole procession of guests. <laughs> and again, it looks amazing for the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Menu and drinks. What's new in food and beverages? So, Wednesday? food and beverage. So, I think... Um, What's really key is the dinner can be one of the dullest parts. Obviously, it's not, but it needs to be done. You need to feed and water people. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it does get to that point, particularly with after main course, it can get a little bit dull. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have done pudding rooms quite a number of times. So explain the pudding room concept. So basically, you do two courses. Mm -hmm. And also, it's where you do cut the cake, if you sure. are going to have a cake. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't having cakes anymore. Yeah, I don't have a cake. Um, mm -hmm. the cutting of the cake is the biggest non-event ever. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, so going into a pudding room. Um, obviously, we've done the girly, pink, you sure. know, Peggy portion yeah, type yeah, yeah, look. Yeah. We've had great Lots fun with Peggy. Yes, yeah. Ladere, you mm -hmm. name it. And then... With the train one, actually. So that couple was slightly bonkers. Okay. Well, massively bonkers. Yeah, sure. I love them. You'd have to think so, yeah. Um, and we did a kind of dark... So it was at Blenheim, and this room is quite dark and gold. So we did lots of red roses, and we had our hostesses dressed in little kind of bob wigs. Cute. But kind of moody. Mm -hmm. So when they were... Ha oh, and also have a mini espresso martini in your pudding room. Naturally. Because then it gets... Particularly the men sure. that might be falling asleep. In tours, they'll be on the dance you, floor. I felt like booze was more important. I actually didn't really do dessert. I did like sorbet and yeah. felt that actually booze is more important. Like, I know. The, the, the bar table is the most important mm. thing at any event, let yeah. alone a wedding. Any ways <laughs> to mix up. Yes, yeah, just, just wherever you are. Not a sense of getting drunk. <laughs> no, but well, to get the party going. Help, but, you know, services, you know, we've all been at, to had bad experience in a restaurant and everything. Mm -hmm. And even if the food was incredible, but you waited yeah, too yeah. long, you'll remember that more than anything. It's true. So service and flow is really important. Any ways to mix up the, the booze, the beverages? So, yeah, I think, obviously, uh, cocktails are a big thing. Um, I would have a few named after you or something. Or if you've, we've had, we've mar we married a couple that already had children mm -hmm. previously. So I asked each child what their favourite fruit, fruit was. Cute. And then we mixed, obviously, a, a cocktail mm -hmm. about that and named it that 
the name of the child. Sure. Um, so yes, that's quite fun. Um, and always ensure that you've got something non-alcoholic, mm -hmm. even for the biggest boozers, mm -hmm. particularly in a hot summer's day, particularly at the drinks reception. Sure. You, you, you'd love a you know, refreshing elder flower. Or, yeah. Something like that. Um, and again, pudding room sounds fabulous, but if you wanted to incorporate bits of that without a Blenheim Palace budget, yes. what could you do? So um, doing canapes or you can also do his and hers mm -hmm. puddings. Oh, yeah, that's so nice. that's quite a fun way of mm -hmm. creating a talking point and getting people to talk. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can do miniature versions at the table. Nice. Yeah. We did, not to keep harping on about my wedding, but we did, uh, we did um, big really ice bunnies on the dance floor. Invited. I know, I'm sorry. We basically really wanted to keep everyone on the dance floor. So we right. did pla big platters Love of it. ice lollies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. There you go. Keep people, keep people entertained. Um, colours. Yes. People are moving away from the all white wedding. Yeah. So um, I'm quite fortunate that I, for some strange reason, I appeal to slightly bonkers people, <laughs> but they have always conformed most of them conform with their wedding ceremony. They mm -hmm. want whites and greens. Um, but I'm really fortunate in the sense that they've let me experiment with colour over the last few years, particularly. But this year I'm seeing a lot more, not just, you know, some years it's more bold colours mm -hmm. or pastels. I'm seeing the primary colours mixed, bold primary, mixed with the pastels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having a, you know, deep, heavy green tablecloth with um, coral flowers, um, so really contrasting cool. in color in colors. Does that work in summer as well? Like heavy green, obviously. Oh, it works. Like yeah, you like we're doing wherever. a wedding in the summer. I mean, the groom they kind of signed it off, <laughs> um, but I'm doing like a really light blue carpet. It's in a marquee. Hopefully, this is what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> light that? blue carpet mm -hmm. with um, a heavy gray, uh, green velvet around the room, and then these kind of corally flowers on the table. Love Loads that. of crystal as well, chandeliers sure. and everything else. And you could do coloured crystal as well, couldn't you? Yes, you can. But I, I think, yeah, it's all about mixing it up. But cool. think about your linen. Don't just do boring white linen. Yeah, I agree. Um, and tablescaping, presumably that comes into colour as well. No yes. longer just flowers. Flowers can be expensive, can't they? They can. So I feel like with the whole tablescaping trend, that, that's probably an easier way to scale back because it doesn't just have to be all about the flowers. Yeah, right? so tapered candles have obviously, mm -hmm. I am obsessed and I love because it's low and mm -hmm. you can do varying heights, but I do feel I've been using it far too much mm -hmm. and everyone else's as well. So hopefully we'll change that maybe. <laughs> but I think what's key is like when we were going back to talking about Pinterest and things like that, is picking out what elements you like. So mm -hmm. are you more a crystal, a silver, a gold? But having said that, mixing mm -hmm. also works. Yeah. So you can do, you know, crystal and gold or rose gold or whatever. Sure. Um, so I think those aspects are quite important. Bit of everything. To think about. Yeah. And finally, children's rooms, keeping the kids Love. entertained. Yes. Getting them getting rid of them. It's quite a good way of getting round so, having kids at your wedding if you don't really want them there. Firstly, I don't think children are, uh, enjoy weddings, no, so I think not. it's actually quite cruel mm -hmm. to them um, to, to, to make them sit through the whole thing. Um, we've done a number of weddings recently where the couple have had children, they've done it the other way around, mm -hmm. um, and in that case, obviously, the kids are very important to them. So we've created, and it's really cheap and easy to do, so how many, a six-year-old is obsessed with a lanyard, mm -hmm. which gives them a VIP access yeah. to Aren't the we wedding. All? So yeah. I write on there that they can test the photo B for me before the adults, and I Cute. take them behind the scenes as, as long as they're well behaved. But then we do, so at Lime, we did a fabulous wedding at the New Forest in Limewood Hotel, mm -hmm. and they already had three children, and we created Little Limewood, which is a VIP club. You got your invitation earlier in the day to be a founding member. Love, yeah. And we just filled the ceiling with balloons, which I just personally mm -hmm. think is the best way to use balloons. Um, and then I'm also obsessed, I stole this idea from Bob Bob Ricard, yes. but obviously not champagne. Mm -hmm. So I chat, so it came about one little girl, uh, bridesmaid, I had tea with her before the wedding. <laughs> and she was telling me that she, she was like, have you ever tried Oreo milkshakes? So I got the idea and at her place setting, she had a button. Um, but you have to have a designated waiter. I was going to say, that's presumably a bit of an operation <laughs> so going on behind that. So we've done it that. with donuts and all Types Love that. Of sweets and things. And that That's keeps them entertained. Fun. Yeah. Great. Uh, finally, what's the weirdest, wackiest, funnest thing you've ever done, you've ever pulled off oh for a gosh, wedding? I've done loads of things. I think they're all quite wacky in their own sense. You know, like the carousel last year at Cliveden, they were a wacky family. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that one with the train. They were quite, I mean, their nightclub, if, you've, if anybody wants to go on my YouTube, yeah. I'm always a bit hesitant of people seeing the end of that video. There was a club at the end of the party. Yeah, we did it at Studio 54. Love they that. were roller girls okay. and shirtless boys. That's, that's <laughs> all we need to know. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Um, well, if you do want to have a look at that video or find out more about Mark and his wedding planning services, go to www.nimerco.com.
Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Georgie, we'll be back here on Thursday with our edit of all the going out tops you're going to want to add to your wardrobe ASAP, plus things we love is back. Until then, don't forget to thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.